Hello guys, welcome back. In this video, let us see one more important and interesting topic. That is, in real time, you might have a need to restrict the traffic coming from specific domains. Or let's say you are maintaining a company and now you are using AWS servers for accessing web pages or you can say for accessing our internet. Now you have a need in order to prevent or you need to filter the access to specific domains only. Let's say your one of the employee or client is accessing multiple domains from this server. Now what is your task is you have to restrict you have to restrict the access to all domains in internet except specific domains. Now, I want you to configure in such a way how to do that. So that we are gonna see and understood in this lab hands on. So in order to do that, we have created one VPC. So for this lab, in order to show you that server I have created in this VPCA and I have created a transit gateway attachment for this VPC so that this can this VPC can get the traffic through this transit gateway and through this transit gateway whatever the server present in this VPC are able to access the traffic. Now this transit gateway also get the traffic right? So from where it will get the traffic from this, this attachment from the, for this attachment from where actually the traffic will get for this attachment, the traffic will get from actual transit gateway. Okay. Let's say I'm requesting from this server, then how my request will be routed, sir, in this architecture. So first your request will be reaches to the transit gateway attachment of this VPC. Then from there, your request will be routed to transit gateway. Then from there, actually I have created one more VPC in order to restrict or you can say filter the incoming traffic from only specific domains. In order to filter the traffic from only specific domains, I will tell you how we actually filter the traffic. So let's move on with the flow. That is the server requested through this attachment. The request is sent to this transit gateway. So from here, the request will again send to this transit gateway. Then from here, your request will be reaches to this. That is firewall, some private subnet you can assume. So to this private subnet, your request will be reached. So then after from this private subnet, your request will be reached to public subnet again through this attachment only so then after through this so since it's a public submit obviously it has a route to internet gateway so whatever the NAT gateway or whatever the instance present in it can able to send the request to internet so up till here that's good so whenever any client or any company person can able to send the request from your server to any of the website but so what is my task what is the question that i provided you the task that i provided you is you need to filter only specific domains you need to filter incoming traffic from internet you will get the traffic right that is so whenever you request a website you will get the response right obviously yes so that response or you can say that incoming traffic you need to filter that that is you need to allow only specific traffic you are not supposed to allow every domain traffic to reach to this website or you can say to this server so that's how you you need to implement so how to do that sir so you will obviously get the response back right to this public subnet yeah so in between in, in between 
you will create a gateway end point what is that firewall gateway end point here through that from internet you will get the response right yeah through that gateway end point only you allow the response in this public subnet so through that gateway end point only you will allow the public subnet that is a response coming from internet to this public subnet so at that time what happens sir so whenever your response what are the response that you are getting that response passed through the subnet end point or you can say firewall end point that end point is nothing but firewall end point i'll tell you how to create that firewall end point so whenever your response passed through that end point then there inside your firewall inside your firewall you will create some rules so what does that rule specify sir in that rules only you will specify from which domains you want to allow the traffic so let's say you are getting the response from other than the domains that you specified inside your firewall rules inside your firewall rules you will specify the domains from where you are expecting to allow the traffic but unfortunately unfortunately let's say you are getting that response from other domains then what you do obviously you will block it right yes that will be blocked so then after then after that will be blocked here since that response is coming from your firewall endpoint only right yeah so whenever that response passes through your firewall endpoint that rules all will be evaluated and based on those rules only the response will be sent to this public subnet from that firewall endpoints otherwise that response will be blocked at the firewall endpoint itself in this way you can able to block that then then after from this public subnet through this uh, what is this this is a transient uh, gateway connection right yeah so this is a transient gateway attachment through this transient gateway again you use the same endpoint to send the traffic back to your vpc a through this transient gateway so that's what we're going to implement in this lab for this lab the important point that is we need this firewall endpoints right yeah so in order to get these firewall endpoints we need to create a firewall so in the firewall we need to define some firewall rules so in order to define some firewall rules you first need to create some firewall rules then by combining all those firewall rules you will create a firewall policy then by using that policy you will create the firewall endpoints or you can say you will create the firewall that firewall contains the endpoints those endpoints you can able to use in your application based on your requirement okay now let's move back to our aws environment to show you whatever the resources that i have already created now you can see i log in into my aws management console now i want to search for vpcs in order to see what are the vpcs that i have you can say i'm opening the vpc dashboard so from this service i'm opening the vpc dashboard so here you can able to see the vpc option here now i'm opening it so inside this you have four vpcs but currently for this lab let's focus on vpc a and aggress vpc i call this uh, lab vpc aggress as aggress vpc it's for my convenience now this aggress vpc cider block you can see it starts with 10.0.0.0 and if you observe this lab vpc a cider block range starts from 10.1.0.0 for 16 right yeah so now you have seen the two vpcs i want to show you the transit gateway attachment as well that is you you have seen this vpc and this vpc so now i want to show you this server first so for that i am opening the ec2 dashboard again instances that is loading let's wait for a second since my vpc a 
having cider block address starting with 10.1 the server present in that vpc also starts with 10.1 now this is the server present in that vpc a you can observe the private ip address that starts with 10.1 right yeah so from this can i say this server present in that vpc yes okay i have seen the vpcs this server now i want to see the this transit gateway attachment and this transit gateway attachment so for that i am moving back to my vpc dashboard here you have under your vpc dashboard you have an option that is a transit gateways option under this you have transit gateways attachment there you can able to see what are the attachments that you created so for vpc i have created one for vpc b i have created one for aggress vpc i have created one you can see for vpc aggress vpc i have created one for vpc a i have created one so for vpc b also there is one so just focus on these two that is aggress vpc related attachment and vpc related attachment since we are discussing with them with these and you can see there is a transit gateway now let's move back to our transit that is vpc dashboard and let's see the transit gateways you can see there is a transit gateway available okay these all environments are available now i want to yeah that's it so first i want to open this ec2 instance and let's try to connect to internet now i am connecting to this ec2 instance by using sessions manager now you can observe i connected to my ec2 instance so i am requesting my aws website that is uh, https colon double slash aws dot amazon dot com so like that i rest uh, i requested so let's see do i got any response so after a few seconds also i haven't got any response so that's why i'm clicking on control c now let's provide uh, some more uh, url whether we got the response or not so everyone know the google website related url that is www.google.com right yeah so i'm just clicking on enter now you can see still we are not getting the response so let's put some time limit for it let's say i want to put max time of this request will be 5 let's click enter so after 5 seconds or 5 to 5 minutes so let's see you can see after 5000 milliseconds also i haven't got uh, any response so that's why connection timed out will be happened right yeah so from this i can say that this vpc server a or you can say server a present in my vpc a that not have any internet connection now as per my architecture what i want i want to create the connection right yeah so but previously i want to create this firewall first i want to create a firewall endpoints i want to create so for that i am moving back to my vpc dashboard here if you observe if you observe there is a network firewall setting is there you can see under vpc dashboard you have this network firewall under this you have an option to create your network firewall rule groups i'm just clicking on it to create the rule groups in order to provide which from which domains i want to accept the response so that i want to define in this rule groups so that's why i'm creating a, a rule group here you have two types of rule groups one is a stateful one is a stateless so what does this stateful means what does this stateless means if you want to inspect or if you want to use the context of a traffic flow that is a previous and current traffic flow if you want to analyze and you want to take a decision then choose this let's say if you don't want to take or if you don't want to consider any previous packets of traffic flow and you want to consider only individual packets then select this stateless currently i am creating stateful rule group so let's say i want to allow only icmp traffic that is a 
if you move on to this architecture so first you need to allow the traffic coming from internet right yeah for that i want to create a rule group so that i am defining and now inside this uh, rule group so that's why i selected this uh, stateful rule group and under the rule group format you need to select which format you need to provide this indicates uh, if you have any syntax uh, specific syntax then select this or if you want to specify domains list then select this this you can select whenever if you want to specify the source destination ip ports protocols and other rules currently i want to specify i want to allow the traffic coming from internet right that is nothing but icmp protocol and through what source i want to allow is that also i want to specify that source as this public subnet this public subnet ip address is 10.0.0.0/8 since uh, that starts with that vpc starts with that ip address this is the cider block address of that public subnet now i want to choose the rule group as this standard since here i am allowed to define the protocol and my source ip address those then you need to provide the rule evaluation order i want to move on with action order so that's why i'm selecting this now you need to specify the rule group name it's a icmp rule group so that's why i'm providing the rule group name like this here you need to provide the capacity for your evaluation i provided 100 and then click next currently i don't want to specify any rule variables and ip set references i want to specify the standard stateful rule that stateful rule defines what so from the source from the custom source that source is also 10.0.0.0/8 that need to allow the traffic coming from icmp protocol so that's why i provided this that is internet common mode protocol so this cider block source address need to allow the traffic coming from this so what action that i am expecting that i want to allow right yeah you can see under actions we are passing that is nothing but allowing so you just click on add rule so that that rule will be added here right yeah so now just click on next and currently i don't want any advanced settings of providing any managed keys in order to encrypt my data so that's why i'm clicking on next and i don't need any tags just to review this and click on create rule group so that this rule group will be created for us right now so now we just allow the traffic all traffic coming from my internet so this is the rule one then what is the next tool that i want to provide so what is my major task here here i need to filter incoming traffic only coming from specific domains right yeah so in order to provide which from which domains i want to allow the traffic so for that i want to create a one more rule group here so for that i am clicking on create a rule group this is the previous rule group that we created now i am creating one more rule group and that gr rule group also belongs to this uh, stateful only and that rule group format is since we specifying a uh, domains that belongs to this uh, domains list and here also i will follow action order and i'm just clicking on next so since here i'm specifying the domain list the domain list i provided uh, the domain name list as the rule group name and description is an optional one and here i am providing the capacity as 100 clicking on next here you need to provide uh, the which which domains you want to allow currently i want to allow amazon.com and amazon aws.com so those two rules i want to allow so that's why i provided those two and through to through what source ip address you want to allow so that also you need to specify that is a 10.0.0.0 for slash 8 through this source i want to allow so that's why i specified this so what action i want to do i want to allow or deny i want to allow so that's why i provided allow and clicking on next currently i don't want any encryption keys that is a custom managed keys in order to encrypt my data i'm clicking on next currently i don't want any tags so that's it i'm creating this uh, rule group 
now you can observe we created two rule groups one rule group that is icmp rule group in order to allow all the traffic coming from icmp protocol to to this vpc and second rule group i have created in order to specify my domain name list which i want to allow right yeah so in order to combine these two rule groups and create a policy we have an option that is a firewall policy here you can able to combine those two rule groups and create a policy now let's create that i'm clicking on create firewall policy here i'm providing my policy name as policy1 description it's an optional and stream exception policy so whenever a network connection breaks in middle of the stream then what action that you want to perform currently i want to drop all the subsequent traffic so that's why i selected this and now i'm clicking on next so here so i'm moving on with the default options related to fragment packets that is how to treat the fragment packets i want to use the same action for all the packets and rule action so how to handle a packet that matches the rule match criteria i just forward to stateful rule groups so currently i do not have any stateful rule groups but here under the stateful rule groups evaluation order i want to follow the action order so that's why i selected this so here i am providing the stateful rule groups that is the two rule groups that i have previously created you can see these are the two rule groups that we previously created i am selecting these two and adding those two rule groups here and now i am clicking on next now i don't want any encryption by using uh, some managed custom managed keys so that's why i'm clicking on next currently i do not uh, need any tls inspection configuration so that's why i'm clicking on next i do not want any tags so that's why i'm clicking on next you just simply review this so in this we just provided the policy name and stream exception policy as a drop and we are just forwarding the rules to stateful rule groups where in this stateful rule groups we defined whatever the rules that we created those two we attached here yeah that's it i'm just clicking on create so that this firewall policy got created you can see you successfully created firewall policy right yeah so now by using this firewall policy we need what endpoints firewall endpoints so who can provide that firewall endpoints sir this firewall can be able to provide those firewall endpoints so that's why i'm clicking on this firewall now you need to create a firewall in order to get the firewall endpoints now i'm just clicking on create firewall now you need to provide some firewall name since this is a firewall one i'm providing name like that you can provide based on your requirement description it's an optional so that's why i'm clicking on next and you need to choose where you want to create where you want to create this firewall if you open your architecture where our firewall need to be implemented under our vpc egress so that's why i need to create that inside our vpc egress so that's why i'm selecting that vpc egress vpc then you need to select the availability zones in which availability zones you want to put this i want to put this under us east 1a and us east 1b also since there is one more vpc there here if you if you observe we have three subnets and currently i'm creating is it for my firewall subnet not for public or transient gateway currently i'm creating it for firewall subnet so that's why i selected this firewall subnet and under the ipv4 address i'm selecting this so why we specified that firewall subnet only because here only we are applying here also we are applying that endpoint in order to send the traffic from here to this vpc we are using that here so that's why i selected this firewall private subnet there now i'm just moving on with the next that is add a new subnet here i'm adding a 1b subnet also here also i have that firewall subnet there only i'll use it this also belongs to ipv4 address and now i'm just clicking on next so based on the subnets that you provide there as well your endpoint will be created so since in order to use that in this private firewall subnet i need to create that inside this only so that's why i provided there to create inside this 
now do you want any deletion protection and submit a change protection currently not required for this demo in real time based on your requirement you can able to select this protection changes protection against changes currently i don't want any encryption so that's why i'm not choosing any custom managed key and i'm clicking on next you can see which policy which firewall policy that you want to use you want to create a new firewall policy or you want to use any existing previously i created one firewall policy with the created rule group so that's why i want to use that so that's why i'm selecting this associate with an existing firewall policy and i'm choosing that policy you can see that policy name is policy one so that's why i'm selecting this currently i don't want any tags for this firewall yeah i reviewed it and just clicking on create firewall so that this firewall will just now create so let's wait for a moment you can see it is currently provisioning right yeah after this firewall becomes active we will get two endpoints here those we can able to use inside inside our architecture in order to allow the traffic through those firewall endpoints you can say gateway endpoints them you can say those endpoints as gateway endpoints also so in order to restrict that traffic you can use that this in here so till till that firewall got created so let's do some other configurations that is from here to internet we need to allow the traffic right so those configurations let us do right now so first what we need to do we need to send the traffic from this server to out of this right yeah so through what we actually send the traffic through this attachment what is this attachment this is a vpc a transit gateway related attachment right yeah so three through this transit gateway attachment i want to send the traffic from here to out so we need to create that route inside our vpc a for this ec2 instance so that's why i'm opening route tables in this i have multiple route tables my server present my server present in this workload subnet so that's why i'm selecting this here i'm opening the routes you can see currently i do not have any route that is allowing the traffic through that transit gateway attachment so that's why i'm creating one route here by clicking on edit route here i'm adding route through what you are expecting to send the traffic out through this transit gateway attachment only right yeah so you can provide that here that is a transit gateway so i selected that so since it is present in vpca i am selecting this vpca transit gateway attachment so to where you want to send to everywhere anywhere it may be so that's why i provided this and i'm clicking on save changes that's it you can see through this transit gateway now we are allowing the traffic go out from this subnet now what you need to do so from here you need to send the traffic through this to everywhere right yeah so through this you want to send the traffic to everywhere so that's why you have to provide that route also right yeah so that's why i'm opening that transit gateway related route table you can see you have this transit gateway related route tables you have two so one route table belongs to one transit gateway route table belongs to this that is this and one route table belongs to this this is the firewall related route table you can see that is this right yeah so now what i am expecting i want to create a route right so here i am opening this transit gateway related route table and here you can see under routes currently we do not have any routes now i want to create a route create a static route in order to send the traffic from here to anywhere right anywhere outside so for that i am opening the transit gateway and clicking on create static route so there i am specifying everywhere through what through the transit gateway through this aggressive transit gateway 
so through what actually our our traffic is moving through this only right yeah so that's why i am providing that as the transit gateway you can see that i am providing here now i'm just creating this static route you can see yeah i'm opening this uh, i'm opening this uh, transit gateway route table and opening the routes so whatever the route that we created that is uh, now available right yeah so now so let's move back to architecture so from this we send the traffic to this so from this also we send the traffic to everywhere through this so then after we need to allow the so first to where the traffic will be sent to this private that is a, to this a firewall private subnet so from here to where you want to send your traffic to this public subnet right yeah so in order to send the traffic from here to here you need to create a route right through what you are sending through this so that based on that you need to create a route in this private subnet now i'm opening uh, that you can say i'm opening uh, this vpc and route tables so i'm opening uh, that what is that aggressive traffic related private subnet related to a i'm opening that so in that let's see the routes so you can see i do not have any route that is allowing the traffic from that is allowing the traffic from this attachment to this public subnet so like that i want to create a route so that's why i am editing route here in this aggressive firewall subnet here now i am clicking on edit and i am creating a route through what we are expecting to send through that transit gateway so that's why i am providing the transit gateway what is the transit gateway that is egress transit gateway so that attachment i provided to where actually we are expecting to send to public subnet that ip address is this that i provided now i'm just clicking on save changes so that these changes will be saved you can see yes so now from here to here the traffic is coming so from here obviously through this nat gateway the traffic will be sent to internet you can even observe by opening this public subnet so i'm opening the route tables of my public subnet so where is that yeah so this is the egress related public subnet of a vpc a you can see there is a internet gateway through this internet gateway the request will be sent to everywhere that is uh, to the website that you are requested so from that website you will get the response back right yeah so that response what you are expecting you are expecting to apply rules on that response so how do you apply the rules on that response by using firewall endpoints right yeah so let's move back to our firewall and see whether our firewall got created or not now you can see i'm opening this firewall in one more new tab to see whether that firewall got provisioned or not you can see that firewall status is ready that means it is provisioned successfully if you open this then you can able to identify the two end points that is one end point related to us east one a one end point related to this availability zone and you can observe under firewall policy what are the rules that you attached now i want to use that firewall in order to allow the traffic to this public subnet from internet so that's why i want to provide that rule here i'm just clicking on edit routes and clicking on add routes here i want to add that route that endpoint we need to specify here that endpoint belongs to this gateway load balancer endpoint so that's why i selected this if you see you have that option that is a firewall one related endpoint that is this 
that belongs to us east 1a since this is a vpc a related route table so that's why i'm using this or you can cancel it and see so for what route table yeah this is the public subnet a related to vpc a so that's why i want to provide that route i'm clicking on edit here i'm clicking on add and then i'm providing this gateway load balancer here I am providing US East 1 year related firewall related endpoint. And to where you are expecting to move the traffic to the public subnet only, right? Yeah. So that's why I provided that IP address. So now you are configuring a rule in order to allow the traffic from that firewall endpoint to this public subnet. You can see that rule we provided. Now I'm just clicking on save changes so that that change will be saved here, right? Yeah. So now you are allowing the traffic from outside to this public subnet through the set, through that endpoint. Whenever your response is getting through that endpoint, obviously your response will be validated based on the rules that you provided inside your firewall. Since the response passes through the endpoint, Obviously, the rules attached to it are validated. If they allow the traffic, then only that traffic reaches to this public subnet. Otherwise, that will be blocked. In this way, you actually block the traffic. Now, from here, from here, the response will be reached to this, right? Yeah. So, this aggress transit gateway, the response will be reached. For this aggress transit gateway also, I have created a route table. I have created a route table. So there also I need to allow the traffic to move to everywhere, right? Yeah. So for that, I am opening again my route tables. I am moving back to route tables. There I want to see that aggress transit gateway related route table related to my subnet A. So related to my VPC A. I am choosing the aggress transit gateway related subnet route table and I want to check the routes. So currently there is a no route that is allowing to move everywhere. So that's why I'm clicking on edit route and I'm adding a route through this gateway load balancer endpoint that is my firewall one related endpoint. I want to allow the traffic move to anywhere. So that's why I provided like this. In order to move my and saving the changes traffic in order to move my traffic from this to here i need to allow the traffic to move from here to anywhere right yeah through that end point i allow to anywhere okay now i also need to allow the traffic in this transit gateway right to move to this yes so for that i am opening again my route table of my transit gateway. So previously we edited route table related to subnet. Now we are editing the route table related to transit gateway. Here you can see this is the this is the transit gateway related to my firewall route table. And here also I need to allow the traffic to move towards my. So here also in this also I need to allow the traffic to move to this subnet right to this. Instance, right? Yes. Through what we are allowing? Through this, right? Yeah, through this gateway, we are allowing. So we need to specify that gateway. So what is that gateway? Here I am just clicking on create a static route. And here you need to specify the gateway. What is that gateway? That gateway is nothing but our VPC A transit gateway. So that's why I selected that. Then to where we are providing the traffic, that CIDR block address we need to provide to where we are providing to this VPC. So let's open our VPC and let's identify that CIDR block address of our VPC. I'm opening my VPC. Yeah, these are VPCs. And now I'm copying this VPC related CIDR block address and I am pasting that inside this route and i'm clicking on save that is a that static route i'm adding to this firewall related route table you can check here yeah that route got added successfully and it is now active 
so our request will be sent from here through this in this path to this then through this again it will send to public subnet and then through internet gateway it will say it will send to that website from there through the firewall endpoint this public subnet is receiving the traffic through this it will send the traffic to this so this subnet also allowing the traffic through this to everywhere and from here through this the traffic will be sent to everywhere in the vpc so that's why this again receive the traffic so let's log into our ec2 instance again i think this got closed due to timeout now let's open our ec2 and try with this is a ec2 instance of vpca and i'm connecting to it again and let's try to request our website again do we can able to request websites that we provided or domains that we provided or not in the domains list we specified or we allowed the traffic to amazon.com right aws amazon.com yeah so that's why i'm requesting here for that you can see i provided https request to this aws.amazon.com so for max time limit i provided five i'm just clicking on enter wow i'm getting the response right so this is the html page of that website so from this we can able to say i can able to connect to my amazon website yeah so from this i can able to say i can able to connect to my amazon website now let's open our rule group so this is the fire firewall related rule groups let's open domain name list that we allowed you can see this is uh, we allowed so that's why you can able to request that right yeah so now let's uh, try with another different uh, domain whether we got the response or not currently i'm expecting to try with uh, google.com so that's why i'm removing uh, this uh, aws amazon.com and providing uh, just uh, google and just clicking on enter max time out i said to five so let's see what response do i got you can say i'm getting connection time out so let's try it again now you can be able to observe that so since this domain is not allowed so that's why it is not we are not getting any response here now from this you can able to observe that if i request to google i am not getting the response why because i haven't allowed that inside my domain names list so currently i want to edit it i want to add i want to allow that also so that's why i clicked on edit and providing that google.com as well so and saving the changes so let's verify that seo got changed yeah, here you can see that seo got changed and currently it is in status as active so now let's open our system manager and let's try with the same request wow you can able to see that we are getting some response we are getting some response so that means we can able to access the website right yeah so in detailed output if you want then you can able to provide hyphen v v v so like that and just click on enter you can see you got the detailed response we can able to establish that connection as well right yeah so from this from this we achieved the task that is we allowed the traffic only the domains that you specified if we try to request other domains you can see we are unable to access that data right yeah so in this way you can able to filter incoming traffic to any particular vpc from specific by specifying only specific domains you can able to filter the incoming traffic and you can able to limit the traffic only coming from specific domains in real time by using what firewall endpoints vpc related 
firewall endpoints option so i hope you understood this video and you got some hands on knowledge regarding how to implement this that is how to restrict the traffic coming from other domains in real time it might be one of the use case for you for companies in order to restrict the traffic coming from other domains let's say if your client or a user requests it to other domains then you might have a need to restrict the traffic coming from the domain so during that scenario if you are using this aws ec2 instance as your instance or server then you can implement this that is this firewall endpoints in order to vpc firewall endpoints in order to do that or perform that filtering incoming traffic task only from specific domains so i hope you understood this video and hands on knowledge regarding how can you able to filter incoming traffic from only from specific domains by using firewall endpoints i hope this video is useful to you if you feel this video is useful then please like share subscribe and hit the bell icon to get the latest updates thanks for watching again see you back in the next video with another interesting topic until then bye bye guys